By the way, Robbie, Leroy right now, he just brought the biggest bag of potato chips into his uh, his studio there. And do you want to describe what these what these chips are? Ketchup chips. Ketchup chips. They're delicious. Now, he has Canadians in town. Yep. So obviously this is uh, this has brought some influence in here. Uh, we've had people on Twitter because I know you tweeted out the ketchup chips. People are some people are disgusted by this. That's because they haven't tasted them. Leroy. I'm gonna say when I started, I was I was like ketchup chips. I'm not Skeptical. eating that crap. Then you try one, can't put them down. Can't put them down. Man, it's like dipping the fr- the French fry in the frosty. It's disgusting yeah. like, first. Then it's coolest. <laughs> what are you like, Yogi Bear? Ketchup chips? Like what? Nobody, there's, there's no eggs in the house. It's seven yeah, in the morning. Have time to make eggs. It's seven thirty. I know. I did a drive. <laughs> I did a drive by. And that was the easiest thing to get. I had my bagel and cherries and stuff like that, but... You just want some ketchup chips. Yeah. You're going to go bike it off later anyway. No, no biking on Wednesday. Oh, no bike Wednesday. Here's the problem. Hump day off. From holding the um, the handlebars, my hands, my, uh, like, where where my thumb sit, sore. Really? Yeah. Got to get a new bike. Like you just hit a long round of BP? Yeah. That's crazy. I'm getting a road bike now. All right. So there's this piece on uh, in, in uh, Bleacher Report. It's called Minka Fitzpatrick's Mission. Really? The Steelers' safety and safety. Is Saban he been in the league protege. long enough to have a mission? Yep. Goes deep on what went wrong in Miami, why Pittsburgh's the right place to turn around, and how he plans to take on the AFC North star studded lineup of quarterbacks. And there's this section, Leroy, dedicated to his exit from Miami. And this already annoys me because the the chapter of this part of the story is called Career on the Brink. Wait, wasn't he a rookie? He he was, uh, it was what, a year in, Robbie? Yeah, it was was, a game into his second year. A game into his second year. Career on the Brink. Really? Yup. Here's what it says. Initially, Minka was thrilled. He knew Brian Flores had just played a major role in holding an electric offense to three points in the Super Bowl, playing for a defensive uh, defensive mastermind who learned the ultimate mastermind in New England sounded perfect. So when Fitzpatrick, a 2018 first-round pick out of Alabama, was told in April of 2019, two months after Flores was hired, what his new role would be, he suppressed his concerns. He wanted this to work. He bought in for four months. He says, quote, even though they had me in the wrong spot and other players know they had me in the wrong spot, even though I disagree with the coaches, I'm still going to follow their lead. Flores had Fitzpatrick playing in the Patrick Chung role in the scheme, which Fitzpatrick believed was completely misused of his gifts. Oh, he was perfectly fine with moving around as a rookie. Fitzpatrick has shifted from outside to corner to nickel to free safety to strong safety to even some 20 snaps at linebacker. But now Flores wanted to play all strong safety and all linebacker where he could not use his athleticism or his mind. He felt that Flores had no clue who he was as a player and didn't care to find out. Fitzpatrick wasn't working on his hips and breaks on -on one-on-one drills against receivers at practice anymore. Now he was taking on pulling guards and tackles. Quote, it was messing up my skill set, says Fitzpatrick. I was working on the hand fighting drills against the tight ends and working on hitting bags and stuff like that. That's fine and dandy, but that wasn't my skill set. You look very annoyed right now. (laughs) Really? It goes on. He needed to play away from that muck. Play where he's more general, uh, where he's more than general infantry. Back deep at free safety, where he can lurk, plot, attack, fuse his mind, use his four four speed, and is a dangerous combination. Finally, in August, Fitzpatrick confronted Flores about it. Nothing too serious yet. He just asked if he could get a couple coverage reps in every now to show the new staff what he was capable of. Maybe seeing his athleticism in person would change their mind. Right? Wrong. The trial lasted all of one practice, Fitzpatrick said, and he was barely given any coverage work at all. That's when Fitzpatrick decided he had had enough and admits he went rogue. He wanted the coaches to see it, even though they were refusing to. So 
He left the hand-to-hand -hand combat drills and jogged to the one-on-ones. Quote, they were frustrated at me for doing this, but I was like, I'm not trying to sit here and punch a bag all day. <laughs> all right. Let's put this in context for real people with real jobs. What if I went in there and talked to Lynn like that? Lynn, you're not using me to the best of my abilities. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like we have had that talk. <laughs> I mean, come on. Wow. Everything came to a head in week one after a flurry of 11th hour transactions. The Dolphins actually did throw Fitzpatrick back deep at center, even though he hadn't practiced there at all. Even worse, Fitzpatrick was communicating with the players. He literally did not know. The players signed days prior to them playing on Sunday. It didn't go well. Quote, it was my first time even seeing them. I didn't know half their names. And while I'm out there on the field in the middle of the game, I'm trying to communicate with somebody. And he's looking at me like I have no clue what I'm talking about. We went out there and got embarrassed to the tune of allowing 643 yards, 31 first downs, and a 59-10 to loss to the Ravens. Fitzpatrick went to Flores again afterwards, and this chat was more intense. He asked for a trade. Flores tried to convince Fitzpatrick that he needed to be the cornerstone of the organization, but to Fitzpatrick, there was no way he could be a franchise player so pigeonholed, so uncomfortable, and so misunderstood. So think of this straight. He ended up getting to play the position he wanted to anyway, and he's being pigeonholed? Here's, here's the problem, okay? One of the things that he should have understood is that imagine what he was going through, not thinking of what, what the head coach was going through. Yep. Right? And he wants the coaching staff to be understanding of his skill set. I think he should have understood what the hell the coaches and the organization was going through at that moment. Coach. And say, you know what? Now's not the best time for this simply because we're all in this crappy situation right now. Yeah, you all went out there. By the way, it wasn't just Mika Fitzpatrick who went out there and got embarrassed. The whole team got embarrassed, 59 to 10. Not just Minka Fitzpatrick. Uh-oh. Leroy, it's his career. It's his responsibility to take his career in his hand. Okay, let me tell you something. All right, let me put my chips down. Let me get my hands right. Hey, man, he was drafted in the first round. Paid handsomely to handsomely. come to an organization and do a job. Okay. Now, what you're telling me is, is even after he was drafted, given a handsome contract, and started working on, on doing what his boss wanted him to do, that don't matter. He can still go and tell the coach what he should be doing. That's oh. crazy talk. That oh, doesn't and by, oh, no. and by the, oh, and by the way, a depleted team where maybe Flores was thinking, look, I know it's probably maybe it's not the best form right now, but that's where I'm gonna need him right now. But and here's what's crazy. I'm surprised more people are pissed off about this because football is the ultimate team sport, and you have a rogue player who's only thinking about what he could do. Yep. Not how he can make the team better. Now, granted, I will give him this. Might not have been the best situation for him. But he turned it around and ended up doing some of the same stuff in Pittsburgh. So now you're happy? No, you're happy because you won more games. Well, they won Let's one keep more it game. real. Oh, whatever. Quote, we had a difference of opinion on my skill set and what he thought I could do and what I thought I could do. It was going to get tough for me to show something to somebody they were choosing not to see. They didn't give me the opportunity to show it. And even though I had film that showed it, the losing and all that stuff, if I was put in the right position and we're losing because of the decision made upstairs, it is what it is. I can only control how I can play. That didn't affect me. It was just that I was being used the wrong way and we had a difference of opinion between myself and my coach. The oh, Dolphins so he's the head coach now. Yeah, the Dolphins declined to make Flores available for the story. Of course. 
on September 26th, Fitzpatrick went to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Dolphins traded him. Blah, 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 blah. Steelers looked bad for mortgage in their future. For Ben Roethlisberger, Fitzpatrick looked bad, billing uh, right at the onset of a massive rebuild. And the ensuing backlash from Dolphins fans uh, did get him for a moment. But only for a moment, he knew accepting the role that changed the trajectory of his career for the worse. Plus, nobody knows why he had been bold enough to speak up. And then it goes on to, you know, all the stuff he had been. By the way, just because you have been, uh, I know that he, uh, you know, it went on to talk about some of the things that he had been through in his life. Uh, that's, all, that's all well and good. But, I mean, it doesn't mean that what you did wasn't still a jerk move. Like, like yeah, man. Like, it's here. There's two things. You haven't even played two full seasons. You're not even vested yet as a pro. And you're making demands? Nobody has a problem with that? You know, people say, hey, he, uh, you know, he's he has a right to demand. No, he doesn't. Not, not, you need some credibility before you can determine what you do best on a football field. I've never heard of a guy that young coming out and saying, I'm not being used right. Think about that. I mean, we've had vets. We had guys who's played in the league for a minute have said, no, I do these things best. Here's the tape. You know what I do best. It's pretty crazy. Like, yeah, it, it's the timing of it. Like, it's not, it's, something, it's not something that we haven't ever heard of guys wanting to take hold of their career and all that stuff. But like, dude, you've been in, you, at that point hadn't even been in the league two years. Like, this is your second going into your second year, and you're you you know your coach is hard up against it as it is, right? Like, you're literally bringing in people you don't even know their names. You're saying this yourself in the story. Um, <laughs> like, I find it crazy. You know what it would be? It would be it would be like uh, it it would be like you know people compare this to the NBA. And I'm like, yeah, but I, I haven't seen anybody do this year two. It'd be like Zion going to the Pelicans and demanding a trade the next year because they're not using him right. Right. I mean, I, look, if it was his sixth or seventh year and he's getting ready to go into a contract year and he's saying, wait a minute, I got no chance here, right? Um, I could understand that. Um, somebody said, Leroy, quarterback refused to get drafted by teams. Box in. That's quarterback, dude. That's a different animal. And it's before they even got there. When have, when have you seen a first or second year quarterback come out and say, I want to be traded because the coach isn't running the plays that I can run, that, that I can uh, best help this team win? Oh, if he does that, he's not going to get traded. What's going to happen is the coach or the offensive coordinator is going to get fired. Well, but whatever. When have you heard, even a guy who actually has the power to do that, when have you heard somebody do that? It's just rare. It's weird. It's weird. And and the thing that I still find so weird about it is, you know, like the story goes on and it's got quotes about Nick Saban and how Minka hated being called Saban's son back in Alabama. Like he was obviously if you impress Nick Saban, this is a guy who usually will, I would imagine, do whatever it is for the team. And you have the endorsement of a guy who's that great of a coach. Um, it's just strange. Like it is, it is a strange thing that you just gave it no time here. And, and uh, look, you could, ju- you could. It's tough not to look at that and say, "All right, guy's a bit of a front runner." Because in Alabama, I think it's a lot easier to be the guy who will do whatever they say when you're at this grand factory when they never lose. Right. They never right. lose. Right. And you take one game where you where you get embarrassed and Hollywood Brown is running past your ass and you're like, well, uh, I can't do this. I don't know anybody here. It's like, well, nobody does. Ryan Fitzpatrick didn't even know who the linemen were. Uh, you know what's crazy? Is that Fat Leroy is eating ketchup chips at 7 a.m. I like to see how much chips have. Why work out if you're going to eat that garbage? Bro, let him, let him, can the man live his life? <laughs> The man live his life. Hey. Oh, man. Okay, body by Jake. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take I'm not break. fat, though. No, he's hot. He's still, he's still got his hot tub sexy on. Yep. Oh, yeah. We'll take a break. We're back with more after this.